G'day everyone, welcome to another behind the scenes video. In this video, I'm gonna show you some changes I've made to my brewing shed, how I've uh, added some storage, changed the layout, and I've opened up my shed so I can use it much more efficiently. So, let's get into it. So the best place to start, I guess, is with uh, the new storage that I've installed. So I was lucky enough to um, have this storage system here, this, this uh, shopping system, offered to me by a family relative who had it disassembled in their garage and pretty much didn't have any plans to use it. Um, I went over there, we measured it up, and lo and behold, we found that it actually fit perfectly in the end of this shed, which was just really good providence, you know? So uh, we brought it over. We had to actually install it in place because of the size of it. It literally goes wall to wall. Um, so you can imagine then, because it goes wall to wall, you can't actually twist it to get it out. So I had to assemble it in place, uh, which took a fair bit of work. But uh, what it's done for me in this brewing shed, it's allowed me to pretty much take everything I used to have stored on the other side of my shed in piles, which, which basically clogged the entire shed up. And it's enabled me to put most of the stuff over here. So I'll talk quickly about um, what I've got stored in here and just show you some of the details. So up the top shelf here, I've got uh, containers and old fermenters, and also fermenters that I don't use very often. There's my two Fermenter King Juniors. Um, there's my old um, Cooper's Fermenter. That's one I got from Country Brewer. I've also got stored up here some photographic equipment that very rarely gets used, and that's just up in the back there in the lowest spot where the roof nearly touches the top, and that all fits in there nicely, so that keeps it kind of out of the way of everything else. On the next shelf here, what I've got here, this is my... Um, my hot cube, I clean it, um, I air dry it in the sun, and I bring it in here and leave it like this without the uh, without the um, lids on. And that's a water storage container. I use that for storing water on my brew days, for transferring water around. Same thing again, I just have them stored here without the lids on. That makes sure we don't get any mold inside. Now, I do wash them before I use them again, so if any, I know cockroaches, but they do come in your shed. Uh, and if a cockroach or anything gets in there, I, I just clean it out and I actually clean it and sanitize it before I use my cube, just for that reason. Uh, behind the cube, I wanna show behind the cube, so I'll move those out of the way. Put those there for a second. So behind the cube, I've got my first lot of grain storage. This is my um, pale ale grain. This is just some Brees American Ale Malt. Uh, in here, I've got um, at the moment I've got flake barley, so I've got about, uh, I don't know, five kilos or something like that of flake barley. I keep that in there because it's, I pretty much can't fit that anywhere else. And the rest of this shelf's dedicated to things that I use infrequently, but I still use from time to time. So I've got some bottles, uh, containers I use for yeast storage, some uh, distilled water I keep handy, cleaning cloths, uh, my grain mill, which I do use every time I brew. I just keep it up here out of the way. Uh, that's a siphon, which I do use, but I keep it packed and stored away when not in use. Uh, that container there has all my hosing, you know, all my lines and hosing and stuff in it. Uh, an old regulator, which I've got to throw out, to be honest, it's just a piece of rubbish. And, you know, the old um, chillers that most people tend to accumulate and uh, don't use very often, and they just get stored up in the back of that corner there. Further down, we've got more grain storage. So essentially, if I step back, I knock everything over. If I step back and show you, this is the most accessible side, obviously, because this side I've got fridges on. So obviously on this side here, I'm gonna have things stored, which I'm not gonna use very often because it's a little bit more of a pain to get out. And on this side is gonna have things I use all the time. So as you can see on this shelf down here, we've got grain storage on this shelf and grain storage on the bottom. In this one here, I'll get that cable out of the way. That's for my outside lights. In this container here, we've got um, these are all my specialty malts. I've got small one kilo bags of various specialty malts. I've got too many of them, yep, I know. There's way too many there. There's enough to brew about 2,000 litres of beer. So I've got plenty of uh, options on hand if I want to brew any style. Um, this one here is, what is it? I actually can't remember what this one is. I think this is my Pilsner malt from memory. Yeah, that's my Pilsner malt. So that's one of my main base malts, apart from the American Ale. And below that, I've got my other two base malts. I've got my uh, Munich and Vienna, or whichever way they are. But Munich in one, and Vienna in the other. 
And also, just as a side note, these containers work really well. I did, I uh, actually mentioned these containers in one of the previous behind the scenes videos and they have worked beautifully. They uh, keep everything out. They keep the air, dust, bugs, moisture, everything out. So they work really well. The only thing I'll probably add to them over time is I'm gonna try and get some desiccant and put it in containers or something that I can put in there to suck the moisture out to keep the grain as dry as possible. But otherwise they work brilliantly and I'd highly recommend those. On these shelves over here, we've got bottles, bottle storage, um, bottle capping equipment just there. And below that, lots more bottle storage. So I've still got a lot of bottles from when I used to bottle all my beer. And I haven't thrown any of them out to be honest. I'm gonna keep them because I will bottle stouts and porters from time to time. And I'd like to brew some long age beers, um, barley wines and things as well. So those kinds of beers, I'm still gonna bottle in glass. So I keep these. And also these ones, this one here, I don't know if you can even see in there, but this one here actually has full bottles of beer in it. So, and they're being stored down there. Now, even though this shed gets quite hot, um, they actually stay quite cool in there and um, they're maturing very well. So next to that, we have the fridges. Those fridges have always been there, but what has changed is on this side now, this workbench here, it used to be over here. And I used to have another cupboard here and lots of boxes and just mess. It, was, it wasn't a very usable space and it was quite cramped. But moving that over here has allowed me to open the whole end of the shed up. And as you can see, well, if I move those containers, of course, but as you can see, I've got plenty of room now. I can move around. I can easily move around. I've got room that I can lay things out. I can keg. I can um, uh, get grain out for recipes and I can do anything I want without tripping over garbage, which is the most important thing. So by moving my workbench over here, it has actually allowed me to use this area now, not only just for uh, storing brew day equipment, which you can see along the bottom there, fermenter, um, brewing system, etc., but I can also use it now as a space to be able to uh, do recipe development and design my recipes in here instead of doing them inside. And the benefit of that is that doing my recipe development in here means that I can actually turn around open these boxes and see what grains I've got, see what yeast I've got, etc. So it stops me running backwards and forwards to the shed to see what ingredients I've got. Now the bottom of this workbench, you can see I've got all my brew day stuff stored here. So down the bottom here, I've got uh, all my cleaning gear. So cleaning uh, products that is, uh, and cleaning gear, some brushes and things like that. So all my sanitizer and PBW, everything is stored in there. Above that, I've got all my water salts and acid and chemicals and stuff in there in the stainless steel container. And you can see that's, that's all my uh, water additions, including um, the acids. So the acids are stored in there in a stainless steel container. Uh, down the bottom here, we've got my pump and just various bottles and containers that I use to store wort for, um, for measuring and things like that. And also, some old Cooper's bottles that I use to uh, fill with sanitizer to clean lines and things. Above that we've got, this is one of my brew day boxes. This has um, a testing equipment in it, all my testing equipment. This one here is not a brew day box. This one here contains all of my spare parts. So keg spare parts, lines, taps, um, everything you can think of as far as spare parts go, end tools, tape, um, everything's in there. So anything I need for spare parts and the repair or fix things is in here, a along with lots of spare taps, um, uh, connections, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in this one here, in this container, I've got my gloves, um, power board, and my hoist, and those other things that I need for brew days that keeps it out of the dust. And underneath there, I've just got some bottle storage, just container storage for water containers, and that's a, a fermenter heater. And obviously on top, I've got a fermenter on that side. That's uh, the new Nano X fermenter I got from Cheeky Peak. That'll eventually be uh, living there permanently with a glycol chiller next to it. So it'll just be, wort goes in the top, and I can pour straight out of there. It'll sit there, it'll be temperature controlled there and everything. And I won't have to rely on these fridges so much. And obviously on the other side is the digi boil. No, that's not a Brazilla. That's actually just a digi boil. I don't use a Brazilla. I use a digi boil with a brew bag from the brew bag company. 
it's a fantastic setup it gives me great beer um, fully manual uh, system but it's really it's been invaluable for teaching me how to brew so yeah that's it that's my shed that's the changes I've made to the beer shed and just so you know I'll take you outside and there you can see it So my brew cave was our cubby house. So when my kids were young, they actually played in here. This was a cubby house and they, they had all toys and carpet in here and all that sort of stuff. And they played in here. When my kids got too old to want a cubby house anymore, it became my beer shed. Uh, it's not flash, it's pretty humble, but it's got the space I need. It's the perfect size. I've got two fridges in here. I've got power in here, all the storage I need to store all my brew gear. So it's nothing flash, but it does the job really well. So I hope you enjoyed that look inside my brew shed. That just gives you an idea of how I store my equipment, how my brew shed works, and all that sort of stuff. So thanks for watching again, and I hope to see you again soon in the next behind the scenes video. Cheers.